Hello and welcome to Car Dealer Live. My name is James Batchelor and today we're talking about electric cars, we're talking about the future of motoring and about helping people making the switch to EVs with Ginny Buckley and John Bailey from electrifying.com. Hello both. Hello Batch, how are you? I am very well, thank you. Lovely to have the pair of you on. Um, now just a quick intro, uh, electrifying.com was set up uh, last year to give people all the tools to help them buy an electric car. It was founded by journalist and TV presenter Ginny Buckley and it's made a big impact in the electric car world with its fresh website and its engaging video content on YouTube. Now this year John Bailey has invested and joined the board and of course John will be very familiar to those in the motor trade. He's the former president of international operations at Cox Automotive, he built up Mannheim in the UK and he's now retired. But he's clear he's, he's <laughs> no, keeping... He's not. Yeah. <laughs> no. Right, I was trying to until Jenny came along but yes. <laughs> well it's clear that he's, he's still incredibly busy which will be music to Ginny's ears, obviously. Um, now, while Ginny was launching electrifying.com, uh, uh, John was busy helping to launch the online used car dealership, Carzam. So we've got two incredibly pe busy people on the show today. Um, now, Ginny, Ginny, you and I go way back. Um, and I know the subject of empowering consumers is very close to your heart. Now, just, just tell us a little bit more about electrifying and, and how you came up with, with the idea. Yeah, we do go uh, a long way back, don't we? We've actually got a lot of history, but that's probably for another programme on another day. Yes. Um, but yeah, I think it's really important to say that for me, I, I didn't want to set out to create just another website about cars, because I think, quite frankly, the world has got more than enough of those already. So as you've alluded to, I've been a motoring journalist for more years than I care to remember. Um, I've worked at Car Buyer, where I, I presented with you and with Matt Watson before you. Uh, I was motoring editor at the News of the World. I've written for lots of other publications. I was a founding member of, um, of Granada Men and Motors with uh, Richard Hammond, which when you think actually a channel called Men and Motors, you know, you can't do it now. It's just not right now, is it? Absolutely not right. But it was a great platform at the time, and it was a great sort of, you know, way for me to really get involved in the industry. And I write for Good Housekeeping. Mm -hmm. I'm a World Car of the Year juror, so I've got quite a strong um, track record in the industry. But I've also done a lot of TV work over the years as well, and I work a lot on factual programming. One of the shows that I work on regularly is a current affairs program on ITV. So it's their flagship current affairs program, Thursday nights, ITV One. And what we do on that show is we take quite complex issues and we really make them accessible for a mainstream ITV audience. And I guess I've always felt that that really accessible personality led approach to car reviews was missing. Um, and I've often felt there's a bit of a disconnect between car advice sites, whether that's dealer sites or um, OEM sites or media, and also the people who buy cars. So with electrifying.com, I really set out uh, to change that. Yeah. So I guess in a nutshell, why are we different? Um, well, we're here just to really clear the air around hybrid and electric cars. And we do that in a very accessible, personality-led way. So the brand is fronted by myself, um, by Nikki Shields, who people will know as the face of Formula E. Again, really strong, strong track record in the sector. And also Tom Ford, who was ex fifth gear and top gear and is like me, been around for a very long time. Um, and I think that really what we've done with electric and hybrid cars is really confused people. Um, you know, we've really closed the sector off and we know that consumers are really confused. Um, so we're here to help those confused in-market car buyers make the transition to an electric or a hybrid car. And we bring that independent, trusted, expert advice in hopefully what is an authoritative, accessible, personality-led style. We don't preach to the converted. You know, if, if a, an electric car isn't right for you, that's fine. We know that people are on a, on a journey. So, yeah, we launched... Um, two weeks after the first lockdown and here we are in the third lockdown and it seems to be going well. 
So yeah, well, lockdown, to... lockdowns make people stronger. Well, that's that's what I'm telling myself anyway. <laughs> that's what a lot of people told me in March when we when we were sort of um, slated to launch and we had everything ready and then the world went into lockdown. So everybody said, if you can get through this, it will make you stronger. And I think, you know, it's a credit to the team. We've got a brilliant editorial team as well. And of course, you know, having John on board now and his decision to invest at the end of last year was just fantastic news. So we're really excited about where we go from here. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Now, John, I mean, just picking up on what Ginny said there in terms of launching in a lockdown, of course, you launched the Carzam in in lockdown as well. I mean, last year was a tricky year, but um, it's sort of weirdly, it's quite good to launch a business because it sort of future proofs it for for, for 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 the good days ahead doesn't it well yeah very true um if you can if your business can survive through a lockdown then in the good days when they come back around i'm sure they will then yeah you're in a far better position so, so yeah you're, you're dead correct with that yeah one. so what so what attracted you to to electrify uh how did that happen well known Ginny for a while she was doing a lot of work for us at cox and obviously a very uh, reputable uh, expert in the field um, and she sort of dropped me a note last year and said uh, would I mind taking a look at her business plan on electrifying and uh, I did and I just found it quite fascinating I thought the angle that Ginny and the team are playing to is being you know um, unbiased giving the reviews just you know trying to educate the world me included on how the whole electric world is evolving uh, I just thought, well, you know what, this is a really interesting business. And, um, you know, for me, investing in business is about the people as well as the business. Um, and it was a good combination. So I just said to Jenny, well, look, Jenny, well, let's, let's get together and see if we can't work something out. And, uh, and here we are now. And of course, the future is supposed to be electric cars. So um, it can't be a bad thing. Yeah. Not supposed to be, John. Not supposed to be. The future is electric cars. <laughs> it, is in, it is in the UK, obviously, government mandated. <laughs> the rest of the world has to follow us. I'm sure they will soon, but um, it does. I mean, yeah. be in the UK, you're, you're for sure. Um, yeah. John, now you you would know this as, as much as anybody, really. Um, people buy cars from people, don't they? And whether that's a dealer or it's a friendly journalist, I mean, that, so that personality is a big part of electrifying, isn't it? And we've got to try and sort of overcome that. Uh, you know, quite often the, the, the worlds of, of sort of consumer journalism and manufacturing dealer, they're, they're not connected really quite often. So that personality can, 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 can really help, can't it? Yeah, I definitely agree with that, James. The, you know, the, the connection with electrifying from my view is it, you actually get more information from electrifying than you would do from the dealer in, in practice. Now, I did uh, uh, buy an electric car earlier this year, and um, whilst the dealer was knowledgeable, he was not as knowledgeable as I would have thought he would be. Um, but I guess it's still very new for them. You know, they've still got product training to do, to go on to undertake, plus the, the charging and all the rest of it. So I think electrifying is going to fill a very big void that is currently in the place, in the marketplace now, and that is is information and knowledge. People just are lacking it and uh, and we need it as consumers to, if you're going to buy an electric car, for sure. Yeah. yeah. yeah it's a really interesting um, point, John, is that I think the thing for me about electric cars is that they are a real leveller. So you can have, you know, very, you know, people who, you know, I consider a complete petrol head, so are incredibly experienced in the industry. The minute you present them with charging cables and connectors and you know kilowatts and you know battery life and range it's confusing for everybody and i think what's happening with this switch as we head to the ban on the sale of new petrol and diesel cars in 2013 of course hybrids to follow is that everybody needs you know some education it's got to be accessible to all and i think that was really important for us that it doesn't matter what your level of knowledge we're here for you no question is is silly it's just a question and we'll do our best to answer it for you um, and i i think it's a we're asking people to make new habits change the habits of a lifetime you know so i think that it's supporting consumers on that journey is absolutely key if we're going to meet that that target in 2030 yeah, 
Yeah, you're absolutely right, Ginny. I mean, you've you've got more experience of this than I have, but we've both got long long histories in the in the car industry, and we've all got used to describing cars in a certain kind of way, talking about power and and all this kind of stuff. And it is a totally new language, and I and I do fear that um, it's one thing the government coming out and saying, right, we're setting this this date in stone. Um, and manufacturers are all squabbling around trying to bring the electric cars to market as quickly as possible. But it's the wider elements, isn't it? It's people, it's like the dealer networks who, you know, they're, they're still having to sell petrols and diesels at the same time. And it can be very confusing, not just for the consumer, but for the dealer as well. I mean, absolutely. I mean, I feel, you know, it, they've got a real challenge ahead at dealerships how do they make this switch themselves? You know, the amount of support that's needed is incredible. I mean, I've been doing some work recently on the used side, because of course, used electric cars are still really in their infancy. And of course, John knows way more about this than I do. Um, but, you know, we know from um, our website, one of the most popular videos is a used review of the, of the uh, BMW i3 electric. We know that used buying guides are incredibly popular because it's an accessible way into what is still, you know, an expensive purchase, isn't it? But we also know, what well, I've um, been looking into this for ICV actually, that the training isn't there to support dealerships in the same way once you get away from the main dealer. Because it's expensive, you might at the moment only get one electric car in a year to service so what's the point in putting everybody through a course that at the moment it's not worth doing so i think we need to really think about the industry from a 360 perspective because it's not just about the ability to sell new electric cars it's about having the right information for used electric and of course that's a different set of questions about how long do batteries last consumers have different worries about that and then it's also about the government really giving support to, I think, the used industry and, uh, and in particular those, you know, your brilliant local, uh, you know, dealer who be local mechanics to support them in transitioning so that their mechanics are, tra are trained in this high in these high powered electric training that they need. So I think, you know, everybody's in an education process, whether you're selling the cars or buying the cars. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, John, let's just quickly talk about used cars because I mean as as you know as we all know used cars last year were just off the scale because for, for all the reasons that we know um, but one trend that sort of did come through was people were returning to familiar technology which is petrols and diesels and electric cars and hybrids were sort of struggling a little bit that's of course going to change the closer we move to 2030 but there's, there still is sort of confusion isn't there and a reluctance for people to go the electric route at this moment in time and it's uh, it's not just new cars it's used cars as well isn't it yeah it is uh, james you know from my view i think there's still not back the knowledge and information is still there's still a, a stigma there's talk of batteries only last so long and they're so expensive to replace and then there's the whole infrastructure charging um, so yeah, it's, but like you say, it's gonna, it's changing. It is changing now, slowly. I think it will catch up, um, as, as the new, the electric new car sales will go, absolutely no question will be, will the used car. But I think right now it's still a very sort of unknown territory. Um, and you get, you get less comfort buying a used car, whichever source of, uh, how you find it is different than going to a, a new car dealer with the comfort of a big manufacturer behind it, um, in my view. So. To me, it's just a short-term thing. It's like anything, it will catch up. Supply and demand as always is the case. Um, and as car prices come down, new car, uh, electric car prices come down, the used car prices will, will become more attractive. You know, cause you've got to remember there's still an expensive car. Yeah. Still a very expensive car. And that's, that puts a lot of people off. Um, but as we get closer to the, 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 the deadline the government have set, um, I, I just think it will rapidly change um, and quicker than 2030, um, for sure, as we've sort of heard this week with the announcement of Joe Land Rover's plan. So. Well, yeah, yeah. And it, it, it does take those um, those uh, car companies to, to put a marker in the sand like that. And, OK, in the grand scheme of things, Jaguar Land Rover is one of the smaller manufacturers. But but when it, it's more about the statement of, of intent, isn't it? And it's just driving home that message to consumers. Look, you know, it's coming um, and we're just going to have to get used to it. Um, 
Ginny, can I just ask you, I mean, what do you think in terms of the government? I mean, do you think the government should be doing a little bit more to help out electric car buyers? Should there be a scrappage scheme? Should there be more grants for, for home charging points? Do you think there, there needs to be a little bit more involvement from, from, the, from Whitehall? Do you know, I think at the moment, I, I actually think the grants are just about right. I think we do have the plug-in um, car grant, which is available on new electric cars. And I, and I think as long as that, that stays, I think the big um, issue for me is, I think it would be great to get some guarantees around how long that's going to be there for, because I think at the moment that is definitely underpinning the market, absolutely. And I think that we need to keep that there. We need that incentive. I mean, if you look at other markets in Europe, you look at, I don't know, Denmark, for example, you know, incredible electric car market there, but that's basically because, you know, it's so heavily subsidised. So I think the subsidies are right at the moment. Of course, there's the grant as well for actually getting the charging point at home. Um, but I think it's about having some stability there that they are going to set to stay. I think what government does need to do a lot more of is looking at the infrastructure. It's led the charging infrastructure is is really down to individual companies. And there are companies out there that are doing a brilliant job. There are some fantastic charging providers out there. There are some that aren't doing a brilliant job. And I think that there perhaps needs to be needs to be some, you know, some service level agreements in place there needs to be you know more legislation around you know it is not acceptable to have charging points offline it is and in the way that it is not acceptable for a filling station to not sell petrol or diesel so i think i'd like to see more focus on that but i actually do think the grants are you know are okay and touching on you know and i think on you know john's um point about the expense of electric cars which is it they are they are more expensive whether that be new or used but i think we also need to perhaps educate consumers into looking at the total cost of ownership and it's that thing that we come back to time and time again you know you've got to factor in the fact that there are less mechanical parts so servicing isn't going to be as expensive you've got to factor in the cost of electricity um you know being less than what you would spend on petrol or diesel so i think it's i think it's two things really i think it's education but i think it's also about giving people security knowing that what we you know knowing what's coming i think that's key yeah yeah and it goes back to your earlier point of it being a, a, a leveler you know we've we've all got to be learning these things about electric cars and once people you know, it's, you know, it, it, we're not talking about something that's in its infancy. I mean, the electric car market is growing every single year. Last year was the biggest growth that we've seen. I mean, my next door neighbours just bought a Tesla Model 3. Somebody around the corners has bought an iPace. You know, um, people are getting to grips with it. And once people have are on board, they're converts, aren't they? So uh, it's, it's, just, it's just going to sort of speed up, isn't it? Um, yeah, I think was it the SMMT figures last year? One in ten new cars sold had a plug. Yeah. It's it, it's it's getting there, isn't it? I know, I know. And uh, and to think, only a few years ago, it would it would have been unheard of to launch a car without a diesel engine, wouldn't it? And uh, it's just the the pace of change is 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 amazing. Um, now, Ginny, you know, we've been talking about um, empowering car buyers, making people feel more comfortable about, about their purchase. Uh, when you look at the motor trade at the moment, do you think it's easy to buy a car from a car dealer? Um, do you think there's there's a gender imbalance in terms of uh, staff members in dealerships, for instance? Or and, and do you think it's easy for, for, for men and women to buy cars, full stop? Wow, you might be asking the wrong person that question because I've got the, uh, the, the, <laughs> the expert here <laughs> in the screen with me. Um, gosh, do I think it's easy? Look, I think everything is hard at the moment. I think the last 12 months has been, you know, it, we've never known anything like it. I think from my perspective, where I'm sitting and having, you know, spoken to people in the industry, and of course I'm a journalist, so I'm looking more at much more at, at, at new cars and at car reviews, but I'm quite frankly in awe of the industry um, and of how it's been able to pivot. You know, the way I've seen I mean, just even you guys, you know, the way you've pivoted to, you know, doing things online to these, you know, brilliant online chats that you do, the way the industry has pivoted to, you know, online viewings of cars, to online sales from an industry that, you know, wasn't massively advanced in, in, this, in this area. Um, you know, the way it's just managed to overcome challenge after challenge. So it's probably not that easy to buy a car at the moment, but I think the wider 
industry and the dealer network has done an absolutely incredible job of trying to facilitate that because we know that the car is after your home the most important purchase you make it gives you freedom and people have to be able to buy cars they have to be able to change their cars and i think you know that yes the industry's done a fantastic job in supporting consumers in that through these really difficult times yeah yeah um let's just talk about female car buyers i mean oh, okay. <laughs> there is there is now i feel wrong talking about female car buyers i'm talking to a woman i'm and i'm talking about female car buyers but it is an important point though isn't it i mean you know you know, a lot of a lot of what you're doing is trying to make women well, trying to give them the the, the credibility they deserve, in, in the sense that the vast majority of women control the purse strings when it comes to purchasing cars, doesn't it? And the and there's a tendency for the industry just to be a little bit too old-fashioned in in placing more importance on on the man. Yeah, I mean, this is coming from somebody who, let's not forget, worked on a channel called Granada Men and Motors. Exactly. So. Believe me, <laughs> you know, I've been on quite a transition. But yeah, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, um, the female car buyer has the final buying decision in around 85% of new car sales, which is quite an astonishing statistic. So that's not necessarily the woman, you know, whose name is going on the paperwork, but she's there very involved in the family purchase, you know, and having quite a big say. And I think all the research shows, and we, you know, we don't need to go in, into this. We've all seen it. I mean, I think John, you've got a great fact about women and women, women would rather go to the dentist than a car dealer. Is that, I think you've told me that John at some yeah, point. Yeah, yeah, that's what we're told. So um, how true that is, I don't, I don't know, but it's not a great experience at times, yeah. But yeah, I think, um, and I think part of that is not, I don't want to point fingers at the industry at all. What, what I think is it's just become the whole car culture has been around that. And I point fingers at, at magazines and websites and television programs because it's all become a bit of a boys club, actually. And, and I've been in that club for a long time and it's a brilliant club. But I think often the language that we use is quite niche. We're talking a lot of acronyms. It's all about, well, you mean you don't understand what a talk curve is? What do you mean? And you know, you, you, you're made to feel a bit silly. And I don't think it's just perhaps women that aren't you know, familiar with a lot of that conversation. And this is not all women by any stretch of the imagination. I just think it's a lot of people today. I think those days where we grew up with a Haynes manual on the shelf and we knew how an engine worked, it's changed. So I know lots of people who actually found the language around car buying quite inaccessible. So I think that while yes, it was important for me with electrifying.com that we appealed to women, it was more important that we appealed to a broader audience. Um, and actually the figures have really shown that. I'm really proud that we're a very diverse business. You know, we've got a really diverse team of people. You know, it's, it's fronted by two women and Tom, but we've got, you know, the, on the editorial team, we're really diverse, we're a great mix. And if you look at the figures that we've seen since we launched, we've been tracking over a third of our audience is female. Now that's incredibly strong for the sector. I mean, way in above, um, we lead the sector by quite a long way on that. And I just think it's because that approach is slightly more accessible, more conversational and more personality led. But you know, I don't want to get into bashing dealers for quotas and you know, all of that, because I just don't think it does any good. No. You know, I think what we need to do is just say, this is a brilliant industry. I've made a career in this industry for over 20 years. You know, it's a you know great. It can be a great industry for a woman. For a woman, come into it. You know, come and experience it. Mm, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if you've got anything to add on on that, John. I think there is a tendency to think that this is it's an old fashioned industry, which in some ways it is. But um, it's especially with electric cars, like we keep saying, it's a great leveler, isn't it? Everybody's learning, no matter no matter what gender you are. Yeah, no, I, I agree with with Ginny. Look, the it is. Um, it's evolving though, because yeah, it is a, uh, a, a traditional, the industry traditionally has been male dominated, but a lot of dealers today, they focus a lot on the, on the female buyer. Um, there's a lot of things that the new and used car dealers are doing, which is, which is just great. Um, you know, more so as, as, as Ginny says, the, the amount of, um, of women that are influenced the decision, um, then they'd be foolish not to. So, you know, it's, it's leveler, it's evolving. Um, um, yes, it's it's not simple to go and buy a car. It's not like you know going to the mall and buying something in the store is more complex. And there always will be complexity around it because, as Ginny says, it's a big purchase. 
Um, but it needs to be streamlined and, and a lot of dealer groups across the country and the world are exactly doing that. So it, it, it will evolve. Time will come, it will be a lot easier to buy a car physically and online, um, male, female or whatever gender. So that'd be my view. Yeah. Well, let's just talk about that online thing uh, briefly, John. And uh, I mean, the, the, the pace of change that happened in the motor industry was enormous last year. I mean, coronavirus has been a huge catalyst for for change and uh, for progress. Um, it's clear, really, isn't it, that people are ready to buy cars online and they're doing it and they feel as long as they've got the right tools to hand, they are comfortable um, transacting online, aren't they? Yeah, definitely. Um, you know, it's why we set up cars and we, you know, we've watched, looked at the market in my days at Cox, you know, a big part of it was no seeing what's going on around the world. And yeah, look, cars are no different than any other product. You go back 10 years, the likes of Amazon, people were nervous um, buying online, eBay, those types of things. So why would a car be any different? Yes, there's still a learning curve. So it's, again, back to the point, it's a big purchase. But as long as the protection's in place and the trust is there, then it, I, I do believe it will accelerate just as we're seeing in other markets like the US, you know, as we're seeing here in the UK. Um, yeah. You know, as you know, we launched Carzam. We sold what twenty million dollars um, worth of pounds with cars, sixteen hundred cars in the first eight weeks. Well, on on a brand new startup business that was delayed because of the lockdown, that you know, it's more than we absolutely thought we would be able to sell in that period of time. Um, and it gives us great confidence that the consumer is ready to buy online. Yes, there's always going to be those that are, are nervous and will not do that, um, without a doubt. And there's the younger generation that probably only want to buy online. So that, that would just evolve, I think. And uh, it's definitely a, a part of the future. I don't think it will replace car dealers because it's still a commodity. It's still a, um, a piece of metal. It still needs maintained, serviced, um, and you know, the logistics and delivery, et cetera. Um, but it's going to be part of the um, new and used car business online, in, in my view. It is already. Yeah. And, I, and as you see, many dealers are also new, new and used dealers are are joining the same, um, doing, going down the same road, and, and so they should. Yeah, exactly. I think I think the point the point that needs to be made is that there's space for everybody, isn't there? Um, and if, yeah. if if the if the motor trade and and the whole industry can become more diverse and be more accepting of of different types of car buyers and the way they want to transact, all the better really. Um, yeah. Absolutely. You know, a, a new or used car dealer, whether someone clicks and buys it or they turn up in the showroom and want to have been taught to someone for two hours, it doesn't matter. At the end of the day, as long as you have the product, the right product in the right condition um, and at the right price, then you'll sell it online or offline. Yeah. Yeah, there was, um, I got my little WhatsApp from the magazine this morning. Um, oh, Jeff, yeah. And it was, you know, a, new, a news, um, I think it's on, on your um, homepage today that more than two thirds of car buyers would, pre would prefer. Oh, sorry, let me get rid of this. <laughs> <laughs> See, it never goes according to plan today, does it? <laughs> um, so more than, yeah, I think the uh, the article said that more than two thirds of car buyers would prefer to visit a car dealership in person than buying online. Um, and that's, you know, around 62% were put off buying their cars online. And immediately I thought, wow, that's fantastic, because that's still a huge amount of people that are interested in buying online. You know, it, it, as, as, as John has said, you know, there is place in this industry and there's place, in, there's place for everybody, yeah. no matter how you want to buy a car. And I think we're going to see the, how people buy and how people own changing dramatically. You might not want to own, you might want to subscribe to a car. You know, we, I think the changes that are coming in the next few years are incredibly exciting. Um, we're going to see more change than I think in the next four or five years than we have probably in the last, since the, you know, the last 50. And I think it's just really, really exciting to be a part of that. Yeah, no, I definitely. And it really is an exciting industry to, to be in. Um, just lastly, um, Ginny, you've got you've got John on board now. I mean, you've had a bit of a roller coaster 2020. You're looking looking forward to 2021 and beyond. What are, what are the plans? Uh, you know, how what, what what can we look forward to? Oh, so what can you look forward to with Electrifying.com? Well, as you said, John is a brilliant addition to the board and to the team. Um, I think we are going to take some time to just consolidate where we are to continue building our audience. We're obviously all talking about what the next stage for the business is. 
um, having some really interesting conversations about that. And as soon as we've got, you know, we've reached some decisions and we've got some news, we shall be back to talk to you about it. But I think at the moment, we're just gonna get out there and try to clear the air for as many um, confused consumers as we can. Fantastic. Okay, well, an absolute pleasure having you, uh, the pair of you on. Really interesting discussion about the business and electric cars. Um, and uh, it's great to see you too again, John. It's been a while, yeah. but <laughs> well, sorry, James, anyway. Thank you for your time. It's been, it's been fun. John Brilliant. Bailey, the busiest retired man I know. <laughs> Yeah, sorry about that, yeah. <laughs> sorry for all my bings and bongs on my on my laptop. I really do need to learn to turn everything off, don't I? Sorry it's okay. We're, we're all adapting to home learning, <laughs> Ginny. Don't worry. <laughs> thank you so much for having us. Yes, it's been thank great. you. You're James, welcome. So if you'd like to be involved in a car dealer live just like this one, then please do email me, james.bachelor at blackbornmedia.co.uk. But until next time, thanks for watching and goodbye.